powder poof. Can I put it on medium? Is that okay? Sure. I can't even flip. Is it going to hit me at all? <laughs> no fan. I'll hit you. Hey, y'all. How do y'all? There's fan. Oh, Lordy. I got no fan. Oh, excuse me. I, what is Audrey. It? It's swinging. Oh, that's fine. It's swinging. Audrey. I got to go. Audrey wants me to. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get our fan situated. <clears throat> you want some, uh, you want some powder on no. your body? No. No. I was reading an interesting uh -oh. story. We're down to one person. That might be us. Did that help? Oh, it did. You don't want to see it. You're going to have to put the lights together. <laughs> Let's just talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> People are filtering in and out. <laughs> We've had quite, quite the day, quite the last couple of days. My, my hair won't. Who's out there, y'all? Hello, hello, hello. There's just an echo. Timmy? Timmy, where are you? Anybody I just, here? I just texted Timmy. Timmy Jack should be there. Hey, guys. Hey, There's Billy Vaughn. Hey, guys. How you doing? <clears throat> how you doing? You guys might be the only ones tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Hey, there's Fubar Nope. Ha, ha, ha. Brian wouldn't She's let obsessed me. obsessed with the powder. powder. I'm literally just got out of the shower. It's just, you need it's, some food. Or I mean, I'm dry. It's just that light is very shiny. I greased his head before he... <laughs> I, I greased his head. Ashley Rowan. Ashley. Hi, Ashley. I know like three Hello. Ashleys. I don't, hey, Melissa. Ashley Rowan. I'm not sure. But hello. Hi, Taylor, Melissa. Or hi, Melissa. So we spent two soup, two soup cans, cans in a real, real life. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to, we want to just talk amongst <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. So are you going to show those? I'll, spend, wait for I'll, I'll 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 wait. Okay. We want to build. Pam wants me to brag about her, but she doesn't want to do it. She wants me to show. Hey, her, I'm not one to toot. My she wants own me to horn. show her art. She did. Were those just today, or no? Nah, those are over that a few days. That one was aren't a, they? a while back, yeah. but this one was new today um so we spent half the day Some on the phone don't. today about our car and we thought we were gonna have a well i haven't driven it yet so i'm gonna wait till i drive it but uh i drove we had a we had a pretty bad tire and probably all of our tires were pretty bad but one really bad um and the car's been making kind of a noise so we got some things at least we thought fixed today and pam said it's still kind of making the noise so we'll see well it made a high pitch noise when you would take off and like the Sounds to we'll me see. like the engine's going to explode. But. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but it still made that noise. I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, like you it. almost never drive it on the freeway, so we'll see. We'll see what happens when we get on the freeway and we'll see what it sounds like. I haven't heard it yet. Um, well, I was driving at 55 so. on the way home. But it definitely did need. Hey, from Pittsburgh. Hello. <laughs> hey, Melinda, Dad. Um, I guess it needed a, so I thought there was something in the engine, right? Because the car is like, it sounds like it's like idling, or not even just idling, but revving high. It kind of makes a, it kind of goes higher than it should. Yeah, that's what um, I'm talking about. But, uh, so I thought it was in the engine, uh, but but it got same gas mileage and, and the RPMs read fine and everything. So um, the people that I brought it to told me that it was a wheel bearing, which also would make sense. And the wheel bearing that they said was bad, uh, that tire was really bad. And they actually showed us the tire today. So um, we definitely, what we got done, we definitely needed to get done. But uh, Pam drove it home and she said it still kind of sounded funny. So we'll have to see. Billy, what's up? Hey, Billy. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say something. Oh, I almost drove it to Texas. And it's a good thing I didn't because yeah, yeah. I might have had... A blowout. It would have blown out, I'm sure. The, the one guy, guy wouldn't even test drive it. The guy said after they the after was... they fixed it, he didn't even want to test drive it without new tires because he was afraid it would come apart. And it did look pretty bad. Now I do pay attention to the tires. I, I actually I have a I have a, a a to do list like for every month, and one of the things on my list is is to check all the tires to make sure they're aired up properly. 
So I do look at the tires all the time, but this was on the inside edge. The outside edge looked totally fine. The inside edge looked really bad. So anyway, um, it should be a lot better off, but they, they did also say that they noticed, they said, they said a little sound from another bearing, another wheel bearing. So it may still need an additional fix, but Pam's all bummed out well, because it still sounded funny. It, maybe it was a little better, but I'll let you. I'll be the be judge. The judge. I, well, I'm the one who drives it really on the freeway and and would pay attention more to the sound. Well, I so, turned the music down so I can. Hear so it. we'll see. We'll see. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's been going on for a couple of days, really. And that that car thing has been bothering me for a long time, but we just haven't done anything. It's just been kind of a funny sound, but it wasn't really. It wasn't doing anything else other than making a little bit of a funny sound. So it's been going on for quite a while. Uh, Dad says alignment. So yeah, they did. They replaced. They so they fixed one wheel bearing that they said was bad. They replaced all four tires, and they did an alignment. So, but again, I haven't driven it yet, so we'll see. <clears throat> it was they they also said the shocks were leaking, and I took it to George's, Bill. Um, so for the locals. Or Bill, um, George's. I started by taking it to O'Reilly's just to have them Thomas. test, just to have them test a couple of things out, um, just to put their little diagnostic deal on it and everything. And that didn't really turn anything up. So I asked the guys at O'Reilly's. I didn't really want to, but I said, "Hey, you know," I said, "I'll take it to a mechanic, but I don't know anybody around here, and I don't feel real comfortable, and I don't want to get taken by somebody." And uh, there was a guy, a, a customer at the counter, who said. He heard me talking and he said, George's, take it to George's. And I had never heard of him. And the guys behind the counter said, yeah. So they're pretty honest and pretty good. So, so I took it to this place called George's. Bill, if you don't know them, they are under the bridge through Benson there. Over by the um, bed. And it's so far they bed, do right? seem fairly, I mean, even though Pam says it still has the sound. So a couple of things. Number one, they, they were going to replace, they said the shocks were leaking as well. I told them to go ahead and do it. They didn't have the part. So we're going to, we maybe will take it back for that. So the shocks haven't been replaced yet, but they did do four tires, a wheel bearing and an alignment. And they said they noticed a, a slight sound, they said, from another wheel bearing. So we might need another wheel bearing done. So, but, uh, you know, they actually, because of all this stuff, because they didn't have the part for the shocks, because they told me about the other wheel bearing thing kind of late after everything was already fixed. Um, I guess maybe they felt a little bad. So they did the, uh, they said they did the alignment for free. Um, the prices that for the things they did seem to be sort of reasonable. Um, oh, they've had good luck with Dell's. Hmm. Oh, um, I, I did go. We went we've been to Dell's, I think, for an oil change. Well, actually, we might have asked them to look at something else too. Yeah. But uh, but their prices seem to be RG fairly reasonable Homestead. for what they did. Hey guys. Hello. So you know it's promising. We'll see. But again, I haven't driven it. I'm not going to make an assessment until I drive it. And we do know there's a little more wrong with it, so it might not be perfect yet, but it should be a heck of a lot safer. That tire did look really bad. Um, so anyway, hopefully it's better. But we've been we've been dealing with that for a couple. I guess we took it in yesterday. They kept it till today, and then they they wanted to keep it even longer to do the shocks. And I said, let's just let's just take it back, and we'll bring it back to them again. It should be safe now, or at least a lot safer. Um, anyway, so that's you know. Uh, that's stuff that goes on for everybody. So apart from everything else, we've still got regular life problems I, to deal with I like pulled, cars. I pulled some weeds today. They pulled some weeds today. I, I pulled um, a bunch yesterday. So hopefully everybody saw the picture on the live. I used a sander. I pulled the weeds all around the house. I used a sander. Pam used a sander today. Did you put that video out yet? No. That one, oh my gosh. That's going out. Uh, that's like... When there's will one be? going out tomorrow. Oh, and then there, I've, got, I've got like a... I got them queued up. So it might be the next day, not tomorrow, but yeah, the next day. Yeah, not tomorrow, but the next day. If you don't watch Pam's videos, I recommend that you watch. <laughs> in, I guess it'll be two days. I just heard it from in here. I was sitting inside. Was she was outside. Me, well, as usual. I got the sander for you and put the battery in it and did everything for you. Um, did, so Pam ran a little that. palm sander and she screamed and <laughs> she couldn't figure out how to turn it on. She couldn't figure out how to turn it off. I wasn't screaming. Uh, oh, you were screaming. Should always replace so, the wheel bearing set. Oh, I believe uh -oh. you know. I I I do know that. Uh, let me think about that. I'm trying but to think did? if they did too. I'm trying to think if they did too. The dealers keep. I actually don't car. know. 
until Friday or <clears> Saturday <throat> at least. So. Oh gosh, somebody else too. Yeah. It's not the transmission. That's actually what I thought when they said it was a wheel bearing. I thought, oh, at least it's not the transmission because that's what I figured. Yeah, it was. I guess that is a good thing. So anyway, I knew you should replace shocks two at a time. I didn't know about bearings, and I actually don't know if they did two or one. I think they might have only done one, but I thought it was shocks that you definitely had to do two at a time. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So that's just it was just a little disappointing today when Pam drove that back and said it it sounded kind of the same. But it's that's not a real test. Just driving at home fifteen minutes. We'll see. We'll see. See the next time we get on the freeway. We'll see what it feels like. Anyway, I keep feeling like I'm a sneeze. <clears throat> We kind anyway. of showed this one already. Oh, really? This one's a little older. I'll try and get it so it's not. <laughs> this one's a little older. I think she just sprayed it today. Yeah, I just sprayed it. So that, what is that? Is it, is it, what is um, it? So what is that? What is it? Is it? It's, a, is it a, hummingbird? it's a hummingbird on the beach. Isn't it's that It's a obvious? hummingbird on the beach with a carrot hat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a carrot. It's a flower. Oh. Um, so when I went to my friend <laughs> Eli's house, she had a little picture, and it was a, it oh, was a hummingbird about that. Okay. with a, a little hat. So I, it was kind of an inspiration for that. But then today I did this one. Some Has this been sprayed? Might, yeah. So this one she just did today. I put it on Facebook. I put it on Instagram. Oh, she said it's on Facebook and Instagram. So these are just for fun, I think. I can't What's see. happening? I couldn't see it. So. I love that one. It's so I love that so one. cute. It was fun. I had fun. If you are just watching her in the chat, don't forget to... Thumbs up button. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Good point. Let's get those thumbs up get out there. Get all nine of these people uh, <laughs> to hit that like. So, so anyway, so hopefully, uh, hopefully you saw the picture, uh, and I said it in the post. I don't know if everybody sees the post, but you know, with the car stuff going on and a couple of other little things, we did. We went to a birthday party this weekend. Um, we've had a full calendar. We've the had a full social, calendar. Full social calendar. So we didn't we didn't get a whole lot done outside, but I did clean up the weeds, which is the first step to even being able to get back in there. You saw, I think, last week I had the picture, the weeds. I mean, three, four feet tall around the house build. They were inside. They were outside. So uh, it took me a little time to pull all those out, but I did. So it's it's cleaned up. So we're ready to jump back in there, and hopefully the weather is going to cooperate for a little while. It looks like we're supposed to get cloudy, but I think we have so some small chance of rain. I, I've been doing the ones like a, around the trailer and working my way out. And by the time like I get, I get them, they're growing back. They're, oh, yeah. I, I can't even keep up. With them. Um, back. I saw, I saw a Havelina this morning. Oh yeah. So I was sitting, I was sitting actually right here. I was at the computer. Pam was still in bed and I caught I something out of the corner of my eye out the window. And I look outside and I have a just one. Walks by all by himself. Um, I didn't go right outside right away because Pam was asleep. I didn't want to make too much noise. I didn't want to scare him like crazy. Heard you but, try uh, to sneak out. I waited a minute and I did go out and uh, I looked around for a while. He was gone. Uh, oh, Yvonne saw the javelina tonight. Oh, it's like a single <laughs> um, one. A single you know, javelina. I've seen a javelina here by itself once before, but the one I saw before was small. This one was kind of about average size. It wasn't tiny, but it wasn't huge either. Where did Yvonne see the javelina? But by the time I made it outside, he was up on the mountain already. He was climbing up the mountain. So, where was he? Was he in like on the like top? Looks like we're going record? to rain this weekend. Was he on? The uh, top? He was almost at the top by the time I caught him, and then he did go up to the top and over the backside. So. Oh wow! And it had to be the same one because he was all by himself, and he was the only one I saw, and that was about enough time for him to make it up there, I suppose. But uh, right, just one lone javelina. She saw it about forty-five minutes ago, right in front of our property. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, I had always been told, I think, that they're kind of a pack animal, and I thought that you tended not to see them alone. So I'm a little surprised by that. Like I said, I saw one alone before. Yeah, um, I saw that one. It looked small. I didn't know if maybe it had gotten lost. I think sometimes when they get sort of sick, maybe they get left behind or whatever. But this one looked perfectly healthy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But it was all sense. by himself. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I thought they were always kind of together. I, I didn't expect to see one by itself. So actually, this morning when I saw the one, I thought, oh, my gosh, there's going to be like a herd come through here. But um, he was just alone. Yeah. She thinks it's lonely. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was it was quiet, which actually I thought I've always been told to have leaners are noisy, stinky, whatever. He just kind of he just kind of walked right by the window. I never really heard him grunt or make a mess. He didn't dig or anything. Although we've seen 
the the remnants of them digging. So I know they do. But uh, he just kind of walked through, I guess. And as quickly as he seemed to be up the hill, he must have just walked through and then kind of just went up the hill. Uh, we get to see them from time to time. I'm still trying to get one on the game camera. We've never had a game camera. That'd be cool to have because I'm sure there's stuff out here at night. There's tons of stuff out here at night, I know. But, uh, so that'd be neat. Anyway, as far as progress, sadly, not much to report. Um, well, it was raining. We're, uh, it was raining for a long time, and then well, we had to let things yeah. dry out. Then you had to get full weeds. They say the males will be alone at this time of year. Oh, huh. that's what I told Brian today. I said he's probably out looking for some action. <laughs> but, but yeah, we, now he's trying to figure out the. So the yeah, process. I've just been kind of I've just been kind of looking at the material. Uh, uh -huh. is great. <laughs> um, Hello. I've just been kind of looking at the material I mean, and the section I'm going to do first and kind of trying to walk through the process so that I know what I'm going to do. I, I'm fairly certain. How's the air conditioning running in the trailer? We don't it's have getting, it on right now. We actually, is, yeah, this is the first night we actually haven't turned it on. It's really good. Um, yeah, as you notice, Bill, you know, the sun going down a little earlier. It's getting cooler a little earlier. Earlier in the morning. So awesome. today is a day that we, you know, we use the air conditioning during the day. And then turned it off, and we didn't have to use the generator at all. We've been supplementing with the generator for a little bit of time most days. But the air conditioner is doing great ever since we cleaned it out. Um, so that's been a big improvement. So that's been doing great. Running it on solar, it's doing fine. Uh, it's keeping our temperature way lower than it did before. Of course, it's not as hot as it was before, but it's doing a much better job. Um, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so I'm just kind of walking through the process in my head. I have a very strong suspicion that I'm going to have to build this section, uh, at least this first section, I think I'm going to have to do it twice. Uh, and the reason I say that is because I think I've explained this before, but I am I'm, I don't know for sure until it happens, but I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. I think when I stack my bales and when I squeeze them, I think they're actually going to squeeze down below my, uh, my tallest door buck, which is our, French, our big French door buck. Um, so because of that, I think it's going to require some extra foam. fill, which I think we're going to use rigid foam for sheets of sheets of foam. So because of that, it means I'm actually going to have to squeeze it down once to prove that that actually happens, which I think it will. And then I'll have to kind of release it and add something in after the fact and then squeeze it down again. But then once I get it one time, I should be able to gauge it for the rest of them. I should only have to do that once, but I believe I'm going to have to do this first section twice. So I'm trying to think how I'm going to put everything together so that I can actually sort of undo it. Um, and as Bill knows, I'm going to be doing some very similar things that Bill did. I'm going to be putting the, the vampire stakes into the bales and everything. So I'm trying to figure out whether to do that right off the start and or the not, because I know I'm going to have to sort of release them, uh, the rebar too. Um, I do need enough in that to keep it steady while I squeeze it. Uh, although it is a very small section, it's not even a bale wide and it's between two bucks. So it should kind of hold in place fairly well. I think what I'm going to do for the first stack, uh, for the test st stack, I think I'm just going to drive the rebar down. So I'm going to put a bale, uh, second bale, rebar through both of them, another bale, rebar, another bale, rebar. Um, and I'll just let the rebar be the thing that keeps it from kind of going anywhere. Even though it won't be perfect, it should be good enough to hold it there. And again, it's between two uh, bucks. bucks. And it's only, you know, I can't remember the number 28, 30 inches wide or whatever, you know, it's not real big. So I don't think it'll go crazy. And then I'll pull down on it. Um, and I've made actually a, a, a piece of a, of a box beam that will actually, as I pull down, it is actually the right size such that it'll come out actually between the bucks. If the bales do indeed squeeze below the bucks, read, which I think they the will. Um, Fubar Ranch, why did you choose to frame your home instead of just stacking the bales like the upside of downside? Is that because of the decking? They did decking instead of... No, no, that's not the reason. That's just a choice. That's just a choice that, that Bill made and a different choice that we made. Um, we chose to build our... So Bill chose to uh, go with one. And Bill, you can correct anything I say here if I'm wrong. But, you know, Bill started with his first course of bales and went all the way around, right? And then... I think after one course is where he put his window bucks, basically. So his window bucks basically have a bottom, and then he builds them up. And I think he built them all the way up to the to the top from that point on. We are building our bucks for our doors and our windows all the way from the, the sill plate, the bottom plate, the toe up, 
all the way to the top. So for every window and door, we are building a floor to ceiling buck. And it's to add a little, it almost makes it into sort of a hybrid. Uh, well, it, it is a hybrid between a, a, a load bearing straw bale and a sort of a post and beam straw bale. It's a little bit of both. At those window bucks, you've got, and door bucks, you've got floor to, floor to ceiling wood support as well. It's just a choice we made. That's one of the things that, that one of the places we went to learn about this does. Um, but it's, it's a choice. They both work. Um, but that was a choice we made. So, so because of that, ours will be a little different in that we won't be just doing courses all the way around the house. We'll be doing basically sections between windows and doors. And we'll be building them basically from bottom to top and then move to the next one, bottom to top, next one, bottom to top. Um, so both work. It's just a choice. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the floor that, you know, Bill's got a different flooring situation than we have. They chose to build on a deck. We're choosing to build on the ground, but I don't think that impacts this decision really. Um, but anyway, just a choice. So it was a first day of fall today. Yeah. Winter yeah. started to, uh, <laughs> RT said winter started today, but maybe it's colder where he is. Yeah. Is it, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Is, it, is he out there by uh, flat, uh, by I don't, Desert Homestead? I don't remember Moses. where RG Homestead is. Remind us where you're at. Northern Arizona, maybe? I'm trying maybe? to remember this time. Ooh, looks like a pretty um, sunset. Tonight. The weight of your roof is going to add to the compression of your bales, so you'll have to calculate that into your planning. Oh, I got you. Sure, sure, sure. So I guess, yeah. So I could almost, I could almost uh, set up each of those sections to not quite even reach the uh, the bucks, the top of the bucks. I could almost build the bale sections taller, knowing that when the weight of the roof is on them, it'll come down even more, I think is what Bill's saying. Um, oh, like Ash Fork area. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Fubar well, Ranch, thank you. I love all the alternative area. views, none are bad. Yeah, there's, there's so many different ways to do this stuff. And I'll admit, you know, I, Pam was just pointing out the other day, she said, I, I, you know, I used to say, and I did, she's right. I used to say that when we got to the bales, it would be super easy. We'd stack the bales in days. Well, you know, I, ours is a little different than Bill's. Ours is a little different than, than some other ones we've done. Our foundation's different. Ours, so there's all these little details that play into it, right? And none of them are necessarily wrong or bad. You just make choices along the way. and uh, But they all have little impacts, right, that you have to consider, so. So yeah, Bill. Based on what based on what Bill just said, I might actually purposely uh, have the bale sections be just a little bit taller than the than the bucks, and basically say, "Oh, I can't, I can't even squeeze it down all the way to the buck," knowing that when the when the uh, trusses and the rest of the roof material goes on, that it'll kind of come down and settle onto the bucks. So I might leave a little bit, I might build them a little tall on purpose. So we'll see. You see the sunset? It's a nice looking sunset. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Got a lot of pink clouds out there. But anyway, yeah. uh, <clears throat> that's actually about all that's going on here. What else is going on? What else is going on with you? Uh, watch. I'm still. Watch one. <laughs> watch Pam's video in two days if that's the one. It's, I swear um, it's hilarious. I have been keeping my uh challenge of challenging myself to do a video a day on my channel. yeah pam's been doing a good job on her channel of, of putting it's, out it's some videos here uh bill right? says if you, you do that, do that you can always remove straw after the fact if it still remains too high but it won't i would agree it won't <laughs> i guess the only question of uh of doing that is when i say build it high you know i do have to put the box beam on and the box beam in theory would connect to the bucks. So how would I, how would I leave the box beam high? Let's say it's an inch or two above the, above the bucks and essentially not connect it until all the weight is on there. Well, I can't connect it after the fact, I guess that's the part I'm not sure about. I'm not sure quite how to make that happen. Hmm. I keep looking over there because but it's I a good point, Bill. I, take my eyes I know you're right that it'll want to come down more once the weight of the roof is on it for sure. Um, hmm. but that's something again, just another little thing to think about, um, uh, as if there wasn't enough already. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, I do just keep walking through it in my head. Pam keeps asking me why I haven't done it yet. And so do some of our commenters. <laughs> but um, but even though it looks like I'm not doing anything, I it's all it's all churning up here. What does that say? Um, everybody is you. Uh, your straps go over the box beam. So if the box beam sits on the bale and then you strap it down, your initial compression will bring it down to the top of your door and window box. Yes. Sure. Sure. Um, hi, Ben. Hi, Brian. Ben Johnson. And Brian. Do you have to uh, wash your hands okay, a lot? Okay, a couple questions. Do you have to wash your hands a lot for them to feel clean? I work in software, and I don't know if that would be rough with dust storms down there. Um, I wash my hands a lot. But when you wash your hands a lot, they feel dry. But I use, get, I use a lot of lotion. They get very dry. Too. So Pam lotions a lot. I don't. But... The caterpillars are gone, and now the caterpillars we are. I I would say pretty much all gone. But, uh, but the butterflies are a lot better. Yeah, and actually, Ooh. you know, <clears throat> sorry, I can't. You, see. I think you said you saw some today. I haven't seen a ton of those yellow butterflies around here. Hey Wayne P. Hi Wayne. Um, but I have seen them, and I assume others have as well. When you go out and drive on the highway or whatever, just yellow. There are spots where those yellow butterflies or, or moths are just crazy. Um, so yeah, our caterpillars are gone. They have become butterflies um, or moths, but they're getting, they're getting taken out on the highways. Dust, dust um, gets dust pretty get everywhere. bad. It does, but I'll tell you what, you know, I mean, we lived in Chandler for dust like sand. Okay. It is a little different. I was going to say we lived in Chandler for like 20 years and just in Arizona in general, things get pretty darn dusty, right? Even in just a regular town, even in Phoenix, right? You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're all of your stuff in your house just gets extra dusty more than it would anywhere else. Now, when you say like sand, eh, yeah, it's, dir- it's uh, just dirty. It's not too bad. I guess I would say dusty. the part that's different, not so much necessarily just in the air or on your hands. Thanks guys. Um, I would say what's different is uh, the sand on the ground or the dirt on the ground and I guess it kind of depends on where you are. But when we go for a long time without getting rain, which happens a lot, uh, it gets super powdery and fine. I think and it has it a lot can of be, clay in it. it. It can be really weird on your on your clothes. It can feel strange. It's like talcum. Powder. It can almost sort of suction you when you walk suction. a little bit. It's it's weird. So not so much necessarily in the air any different. I mean, yeah, it gets dusty in here, but not so not even so much uh, more than it, we did in Chandler. I don't. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's dusty, but I think Arizona is dusty in general. Yeah. Um, down by Bisbee, you. see a lot of the yellow butterfly. I'll bet you do. I'll bet you do. I forget where I drove. There was one day I drove to uh, Patagonia, uh, Patagonia Lake, a state park around here, and just tons of those butterflies. And I thought, well, there's where all the butterflies are going that we had, uh, the, the caterpillars that yeah. we had at our place. But I actually didn't see the caterpillars a ton here. It looks like when they kind of did their thing, they they left. So I yeah. actually didn't see a ton here. Pam said she I've saw some today. Thing. But but yeah, it's not like they overtook the place. Like the caterpillars were everywhere. But I think once they changed, we didn't see them much as butterflies. So that was just our experience here. But I know they are all over. And they're all over the vehicles and everything. So uh, Are we going to make this one short? Anyway. You said just, yeah, I mean, we can make this one short again, too. Feel free to it. ask anything you like. But, yeah, but we've kind of caught you up to speed. I'm sorry there's not a lot more going on. But, you know, we did – we had a we had a, a little trip this weekend, and we've kind of been uh, thinking and messing with the car for a couple of days here. Um, hopefully we're at least on the road to the car being in better shape. Um, uh, other than that, I think everything's doing all right. We have them all over the place here. Mm-hmm. I'm sure mm-hmm. many people do, but it's interesting. It looks like they kind of hatched and left. I want to go. Here. I want to go outside now and look at the. Sunset. Oh, Pam wants to go see the sunset. <laughs> all right, guys. Sunset. Again, you know, if if anybody's got anything they want to know, let me know. But uh, we'll probably cut it short tonight. Not a ton going on. Uh, uh, Hopefully, more I do. To I do want to get out at these bales right away. I've been thinking about it a bunch. Um, so. Hopefully more next week. Uh, yeah. Pam's going to go out and look at the sunset. Bill and Yvonne, you might too. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's pretty. Um, anyway, we'll talk to you all next week. Thanks for stopping in. Sorry it's a short one. Uh, hope everybody's doing all right. Stay safe. 
Thank and you. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. That was a short one.